Siguro lahat tayo merong kilala na tao, masasabi natin, napaka-idol ng taong ito. At dyan po sa aming neighborhood, kuminsan namiminta na ako, nakikita ko yung uh, mga ibang kabataan, mula umaga, tanghali, hapon, hanggang gabi, nandun lang sila. Nagpipeople watching lang, at uh, nandun, titingin ako, tingdudung ako, nandun sila. Halos ayaw nilang umabsent doon sa tabi ng kalsada. But probably, we have, and we know people that are probably, uh, can be correctly labeled idle or lazy. How did you get to like idle people? How was your experience with them? Have you ever suffered because of idleness? Maybe because of other people's idleness or your own? Our Father, we ask you to just quiet our hearts, please, and speak to us tonight. Speak to us in simple terms, O Lord. May your Holy Spirit fill this place. And very specially, O oh God, we open our hearts to the work of your Holy Spirit. May your Holy Spirit lead us to your truth. May your Holy Spirit unlock to us the mystery of your word. May your Holy Spirit take away our spiritual blindness so that we may see your word as you want us to see it. Work in our hearts, O oh Lord. Preside over this activity. Bless your people with this message. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Ano po ba yung definition ng idleness? Who is an idle person? Well, the dictionary tells us that an idle person is not occupied or employed. Or, in other words, inactive. An idle person is not turned to appropriate use. And so, therefore, lacking worth or useless. Siguro may mga taong nagpa-flash ating mind. Kung sino mga idle na kilala natin, maaaring tayo. Now, what are the forms of idlenesses and corresponding results? Marami pong mukha, maraming kulay, maraming hugis ang idleness. Isa na dyan, what are the many forms of uh, idleness? Oversleeping. O huwag niyong tingnan ang katabi niyo. Lalo kung kabisado ninyo. Oversleeping. What is the right amount of sleep? For a healthy adult, it's plus or minus a little bit. Eight hours a day. Or, depending on your metabolism and activity, what is required to be reasonably rested and refreshed. Now, there are people that oversleep. They don't take nap, they hibernate. And there are those that don't just sleep, they become extinct, like volcanoes, to wake up only every now and then. Proverbs 19, verse 15 says, Laziness brings on deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. The NIV, or the New Standard Version, tells us, the shiftless person goes hungry. Proverbs 10.5 also tells us, He who gathers crops in summer is a wise man, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. And what do oversleepers miss? They miss opportunity. They miss a lot of good chances. Sabi nila, opportunity not only once. We miss it pa. Samantalang temptation na open and we always open. Paano negative? Lagi na lang negative. Kaya lagi na lang talo. Gano'ng karami na pong harvest season sa inyong buhay ang dumating na nalampasan tayo dahil tulog? It need that be a physical harvest in the farm. Pero sabi nila yan daw tao that made it or those people that are in the right place at the right time. Are we in the right places at the right time when things happen? Nakakasali ba tayo pag may progress, pag may asenso, pag may magagandang deal, kasali ba tayo o pirming na pag-iiwanan? The Bible tells us that laziness brings on deep sleep and an idle person will suffer hunger. Wala pong taong masipag ang magugutong. Kahit sa atin ngayon, kahit sabihin natin napakahirap ng buhay, hindi totoo na wala tayong magagawa. Sino mang tao na willing maglabad dyan, maglinis-linis, tumulong-tulong. At the least, yun ang pwedeng gawin. Dahil any able-bodied person can do that. Hindi mawawala ng kakainin. But idle people are always waiting for the big time. Lagi naghihintay ng darating din yung time ko, makita mo. Habang naghihintay, they're going hungry, utang ng utang, kaya tuloy lumulubog. Ayaw mag-settle for small time. Hinihintay yung big hit na hindi naman dumating the thing. Sabi ng Proverbs 20 verse 13, Do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. Napakahirap po sa tao na lagi nalang gusto matulog. 
Imagine, uh, tulad nga nang nasabi ko na, payagan niyo akong sabihin muli. Kung natutulog tayo, natatandaan niyo po na noon, merong advertisement, ang dyaryo na paulit-ulit. Sabi niya, I want one-third of your life. Akala ko evangelistic po yun, no? Uh, crusade. Yung pala advertisement ng kama, di po ba may mga advertisement na puro tanong kung ilang araw nakalagay sa dyaryo, tanong lang, tsaka palang sasagutin to arouse curiosity. Yun ang tagal, I want one-third of your life. Yung pala, nung makailang linggo nang nakikita mo, I want one-third of your life. Sino nakakita ng advertisement na yun? Nakakatanda. Yan. Yung pala kama. Paano? We sleep eight hours a day. E eight is one-third of twenty-four hours a day. Imagine, one-third of our life tulong. Kaya kung tayo po'y nabuhay ng sixty years, twenty years tayo tulong. Pag pinagdugtong-dugtong nyo yan, twenty years na tulong. E yung iba naman, hindi lang eight hours. So, gano'n karami yung tulog dyan? Tapos nagtataka pa kaya, ang hirap ng buhay, ba't kaya hindi ako umasenso? Makatulog na lang nga. And so, dapat po tayo natutulog, ibinigay yan sa atin ng Diyos para tayo mag but it must be put in the correct place. And you will notice, brothers and sisters, the more you sleep, the sleepier you get. Kapag tulog ka ng tulog, mas antukin ka pa nga eh. Di ba? Kaya sabi, huwag tayong pirming tulog ng tulog ng walang katuturan. That's one form of idleness. There's another form, hindi tulog pero over-resting. Sobrang makapagpahinga. Ang pahinga siyempre, proportionate sa pagod. Napagod ng dalawang minuto, magpapahinga ng dalawang oras. Proverbs 6, verses 6 to 10, anong sabi? Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler. Yet, it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands to rest, and poverty will come to you like a bandit. Napakaganda po, punong-puno ng wisdom ang Proverbs. Kunting pahinga, kunting patulog-tulog dyan, kunting papetiks-petiks. Pagka rest, rest, nakasakay pa sa duyan habang kinukutukutuhan. Talagang todo-todo ang pag-enjoy, nagpapagunod pa ng puti. May manikurista, may pedikurista, tapos nagtataka pa, ba't eh, hindi ako yung maman? So the poverty will come to you like a bandit. There are people that really overrest. And let me repeat, yung ating pong binabanggit sa commandment ni Lord about the Sabbath. Ang ipinagpipilitan ng tao kung kailan ba yung Sabat at nag-aaway-aaway, kulang nalang magtabunutan ng mga relihiyon kung kailan ba talaga ang Sabat. Ang nakakalimutan yung importanting first half of the command, six days you shall labor, and on the seventh you will rest. Pinagkakaguluhan yung rest, ayaw saan din yung laboring in six days. Ang command ng Panginoon, for six days you shall labor, anybody that doesn't labor for six days is breaking the law. Minsan galit na galit tayo sa idolaters, galit na galit tayo sa mga murderers, galit na galit tayo sa mga uh, adulterers, and yet pare-pareho pala when you don't work six days a week because it's a command. Ayaw po ng Lord na ang tao eh paligat. Kaya sabi niya, six days you shall labor. Because if you don't do so, poverty will come like a bandit. Biglang-bigla, hindi mo inaasahan at sinimot, nilimas ang lahat ng ating ari-arian. There is another form of idleness that is unemployment. Now, it is the kind of unemployment that is intentional, yung by free will, o kaya consequential, which was a, a result of laziness. Hindi po natin ibig sabihin yung nagsisikap, apply ng apply, pero wala pa na. Hindi po yun. Yung talagang may opportunities na ayaw pa. Sa kana, ano naman nakala mo sa akin, yan lang, papatulang ko na, mas gusto ko mas malaki. Napakarami po nating mga kakilala na nasanay magtrabaho sa ibang bansa. At pagka sila'y napauwi dito, either natanggal o nagresign or whatever reason, ay ayaw magtrabaho locally at naghihintay na isa uling break abroad. Meanwhile, nagugutom ang pamilya, napunta na kay Antonio Tambunting ang mga alahas ni Missy, kung ano-ano na ang nawala, ang mga kaset, napunta na sa kapitbahay, pero ang inaantay yung dollar uli. Wala pong masama na maghangad na malaki ang kitain. Pero habang wala, we must settle for what is available. There are many people that are unemployed by their own free choice. And that's a sin. It is sin not to work when you can work. 
Even the Lord, the Lord worked for six days, and on the seventh he rested to appreciate the work of his hands. And so there are people that are unemployed by their own free will. Tinatanong mo na, gusto mong trabaho ito? Pampira ka naman, ganyan lang bang pagtingin mo sa akin? Gusto big time. Gusto big time. The Lord employed himself as a carpenter. There is nothing dishonorable about manual work. And the Lord dignified manual work by becoming a carpenter himself. He could have been an artisan. He could have been a judge. He could have chosen any profession. But the mere fact that he chose to be a carpenter just would like to underscore and underline for us the fact that all forms of honest labor is honorable. There is no such thing as dishonorable labor so long as it's honest. And so unemployment, that's why 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 to 12 tells us, make it your ambition to work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. Make it your ambition to work with your own hands. This is not, of course, to subvert the concept of organization, kung saan may mga leader, may mga managers, at may mga nag-delegate ng mga trabaho sa kanilang subordinates. But to work with your own hands is a figure of speech. Just to be productive, use your body, it may be your brain. If you're an editor, it may be your eyes. If you're a musician, it may really be your hands or whatever. But to work, and the Lord said, make it your ambition to work. Ano po ang ambition ng napakarami sa atin? Mag-retire. Mag-weekend. Magpahinga. Nakikita natin kung gano'ng kabaligtad lagi tayo sa kalooban ng Diyos. Pag sabi ikaw, ano ambition mo? Ay, gusto ko talagang matapos na itong aking pagtatrabaho, yung magpasiting pretty naman ako. Gano'n kaya ang nagsasabing ang ambisyon ko hanggang mamatay ako, nagtatrabaho ako? Hindi naman natin sinasabing magpakamatay tayo sa pagtatrabaho, pero dapat hanggang mamatay tayo, lahat ng kaya natin gawin, ginagawa natin. Yun ang isang respectable person. Yung kayang gawin. Ano? Kung hindi tayo baldado, wala tayong mga kapansanan o sakit. Make it your ambition to work. Eh yung iba, lunis na naman, trabaho na naman. Makikita ko na naman ang pagmumuka ng amo ko. Nasakay na naman ako sa bus. Tanggalin mo naman sa trabaho, nagbabakaawa. Huwag po, huwag po. Pero pagka lunis, nagre-reklamo at trabaho na naman. Yung mga iba na ko, babalik na naman ako sa Saudi Arabia, trabaho na naman. Subukan mo naman huwag pabalik it kahit gera ay nakakandara pa bumalik. Bakit negative ang attitude natin sa work? Work is a gift. And every day we must say, Hai salamat, another opportunity to work. So that I can earn what I will eat, and I can earn what my family will eat, and I have something to spare to those that cannot possibly earn because they are ill. Work is a gift. At meron ba ditong pinipilit magtrabaho? Meron ba ditong nagmamakaawa ang inyong employer na please magtrabaho ka dito? Wala. Nag-apply tayo ng kusa at gusto natin magtrabaho. So hindi na rin lang naman natin pwedeng tanggalin yung trabaho sa ating buhay. Ba't hindi na lang natin mahalin? Parang asawa kong mintan. Hindi mo na naman maitapod. Mahalin mo na. Mabuti na yung merong psychological effect. Di ba na? appreciatein mo na. Eh, pag lagi na yung inisip, yung negative, maiinis kayo. Eh, nandiyan din naman. Di ang isipin na yung positive. Ang isipin na lamang ay yung kung ano ang maganda. And so sabi, tingnan mo yung langgam. Ikaw taong tamad, sabi. Mabuti pa ang langgam. Wala naman nag-uutos. Wala namang amo. Wala namang hepe. Trabaho ng trabaho. Ay, ito naman mga tao, may amo na nga, mapatalikod lang kote. Pahinga. Pagdating ng amo, nagpapanggap na gumagawa. Wala namang nangyayari. And so, sabi, mabuti pa ang langgam. Unemployment. 2 Thessalonians 3, verses 10 to 12, sabi, ni Paul, For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule, If a man will not work, he shall not eat. We hear that some among you are idle. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ, to settle down and earn the bread that they eat. Napakalaki pong kapintasan sa isang kristyano na siya isang pabigat at pakainin kung kaya ng kanyang katawan na magtrabaho. 
Kaya tayo mga Christians, hindi po tayo ina-encourage maglimos sa mga tao na nandiyan sa kalye na malakas pa sa atin. Sapagkat lalo nang natin silang tinuturuan. Mga bata, sa mga traffic light, kakatuking ka sa sasakyan, hihingi, kawawa naman ang batang ito, mabigyan. Pag yung mga batang yan, binigyan niya ng binigyan, makikita ng mga kalaro, anong gagawin ng kalaro, mamamalimos din. And we are breeding beggars. That's not Christianity. That is not respectability. When a person is hungry, you don't give him fish. Give him a net and teach him how to fish. Matagal ka nang wala, kumakain pa. Siguro may kilala kayong mga taong ganito, kung isang kamag-anak. Talaga naman, pag nagwitong pakakanin mo, pero bukas, gutom uli, nandyan na naman, araw-araw, gabi-gabi, day by day, sakit ng ulo. Ang mga kamag-anak, hindi po dapat na ng Christian. E yung iba sabi, ay Christian yata, dapat giving ng giving, no. Sabi ni Paul, if any man will not work, let him not eat. Ayaw niya magtrabaho, kaya niya, mamatay sa ng gutom. Hindi po tayo yung nasasamang tao, pero ang tunay na kabutihan, ay yung hindi pagkonsente sa katamaran. Hindi po kabaitan yung pagkonsente. Akala natin, ang bait niya, talagang okay lang yan, okay na okay. Hindi po tunay na kabaitan yun. Sapagkat sinisira na natin ang ating sarili, pumapayag pa yung iba. Hindi kabaitan yun. Real charity is intelligent. And so, if anyone will not work, let him not eat. Proverbs 10.4 Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. Nakita nyo po, wala pong kontra ang Diyos na tayo'y umunlad, kumasenso, magkaroon ng wealth. Ang gusto lang niya, through honest labor. And the Lord knows how to reward the work of an honest man. There's another form of idleness aside from unemployment, and this is underemployment. May ginagawa naman. Hindi naman talaga totally walang ginagawa. Pero napakalita man ang ginagawa niya kung ikaw kumpara sa kanyang kinakain, sa kanyang hinihinga, lugi pa ang Diyos, sa hininga na lang ng oxygen, lugi pa ang Diyos. Dahil wala siyang production. Having less than full-time and regular work or adequate employment by choice. Remember, this is always by choice. Proverbs 18.9, Sabi, one who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. Kapatid ng isang tamad o makupad ang isang naninira. Sapagat nakakasira din siya. Proverbs 24, verses 30 and 31. Sabi niya, I went past the field of the sluggard, past the vineyard of the man who lacks judgment. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds, and the stone wall was in ruin. Ganun po kaya ang buhay natin. Puro damo. Puro mga damong ligaw. Yung mga pangit na damo. At puro tinik ang ating mga bukid. At yung mga pader daw, nakisira na, wala man lang nagme-maintain. Ganun po ba ang buhay natin? Ganyan po ang buhay ng mga tamad. Ng mga sluggard. Wala namang ginagawa, sariling bahay lang, hindi pa maayos. Sariling katawan, hindi maayos. Sabi, sinasayang ang lahat ng pagkakataon. Lahat po tayo mga tao, binibigyan ni Lord ng mga resources that are very unique. We have gifts. Gifts which, when properly employed, will make us not only self-sufficient and self-reliant, but prosperous to the point that we can help others. But what is happening? We under-employ ourselves. Pwede bang magtrabaho, tumitigil na. May mga tao, 50 years old, 40, gusto na mag-retire. Meron naman, dalawang oras pa lang nagtatrabaho, ayaw na. Kaya 30 minutes pa lang nagre-review, tama na. Pero pagka ang mga ginagawa natin ilayaw ng katawan kahit tatlong oras, BT, gusto pa. And so, we underemploy ourselves. We don't use to the full all the potentials that God gives us. And that is idleness. People that can still take a lot more with the capacity that they have, but they take a lot less because they choose to be lazy. And then there's another way to be idle, and this is by being busy. Yung ano yan, baligtad. By being busy with unproductive activities. And that is a form of idleness. Pagka sinabi natin productive, yung nakakaproduce siya ng food or products or services for fellow man. So any activity that is against that is, of course, counterproductive or idleness. Though it may actually be characterized by a lot of movement. We cannot mistake activity for achievement. Many people are very active but get nowhere. They produce nothing and they serve no one, but they are busy. 
At sino ang mga yan? Unang-una na po ang mga chismoso at chismosa. Gossiping is a form of idleness by being busy for nothing. 1 Timothy 5.13, sabi, Besides, they get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house. And not only do they become idlers, but also gossips and busybodies, saying things that they ought not to say. Noon daw po, nagkaroon ng project ang United Nations sa isang village sa Africa. Nilagyan nila ng gripo ang bawat tahanan para may running water ang bawat manyo. Doon ang mga tao maghuhugas ang kanilang mga pagkain, maglalaba, maliligo. Ayaw ng mga misis. Walang nagbubukas ng gripo sa kanilang bahay. At kahit mabibigat ang mga palayok, dinadala nila doon sa ilog, doon saan sila sumasalok ng tubig. Palibahas at habang sumasalok ay chismisan ang chismisan. Nawala nga naman ang kanilang chismisan nung may kanya-kanyang gripo sa bahay. Kaya ayaw, nireject nila ang project na ito. It did not succeed. Akala natin matutuwa na sila dalawa'y gripo na bawasan ng daldalan. At napakarami po mga tao inuubos ang kanilang panahon sa pagdadaldal. At lalo kung hindi busy. Kaya nga sabi, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. If you are not doing anything, make sure that Satan will put you to work. Satan, meron siya isang katangian na dapat nating kopyahin. Ang sipag. Di po ba? Napakasipag. Sa paggawa lang nga ng mali. Pero ang sipag-sipag. At hindi niya natotolerate ang taong tamad. Kaya pag tayo tamad at walang ginagawa, bibigyan ka niya sigurado ng magagawa. Gano karaming kasalanan ang nagawa natin na ang umpisa ay sabi lang natin, kasi bored ako. Wala kasi akong magawa eh. Kaya ako lang naman ginawa yan kasi wala akong magawa. Sapagkat ang taong walang magawa, bibigyan talaga yan ni Satan ng magagawa. At isang, ang unang-unang uan ibinibigay, mag-gossip. Idle people are gossips. Sa Japan, nabawasan daw po ang mga village chismis. Noong, marami po mga kumpanya ng mga electric pan at mga TV, dinadala nila yung mga spare parts sa bahay-bahay, ang mga misis, tinuruan nila mag-assemble, nabawasan ng chismis at intriga sa mga bayan, umunlad, umasenso. Habang humihirap ang buhay, mas talamak ang chismis. But don't get me wrong, kahit sa high society, cancerous ang chismis. And so gossiping is a form of idleness. There's another form of idleness by being busy, and that is gambling. Kumita, pero may uwi. May uwing pera, kung nanalo. Pero walang na-produce siya na product. Wala siyang na-produce na services. Wala siyang na-produce na service to men. And so therefore, that's why gambling is very evil. It is eating something that is stolen. Why stolen? So, may, bakit itinaya naman niya yan? Hindi ko makinuha sa kanya. Stolen, because what does stolen mean? We did not work for it, honestly. Well, you may work for it, but did you work for it, honestly? Genesis 3.17, ang sabi ni Lord, si Adam and Eve, In toil you shall eat of the ground all the days of your life. In Genesis 3.19, In the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread. Ayaw ng Panginoon na kumakain tayo nang hindi tayo nagtatrabaho. Hindi ka tanggap-tanggap sa Panginoon ang mga taong pabigat. Sabi niya, in the sweat of your face, you shall eat. Ayaw ni Lord ng mga patiway-tiway. Mga freeloaders. Free riders. Gusto na lang ay sumipit ng dugo ng kapwa. No, this is not honorable. And gambling is one of them. How can gamblers be happy? Samatala ang lahat ng kanilang kaligayahan ay kalungkutan ng natalo. Bawat may isang bahay na may gambler na masaya at may pansit, merong ibang bahay na malungkot, mag-asawa ang nag-aaway, mga anak na hindi nakaka-enroll dahil nandala ng iba. It is robbery. Robbery with consent, but nevertheless, robbery. Another idle activity by being busy is what I have mentioned kanina. People watching. Yung mga girls watch the boys while the boys watch the girls who watch the boys go by. Ganyan. Bantayan ang bantayan. Eye to eye. People watching. At marami pong tao yan ang libangan. Mamintana. Habang nangungukot ng butong pakwat nangunguyakoy. Pinapanood lahat ang taong dumadaan. Idleness. And there's another way to be idle and that is to have too much entertainment. Yung talagang addict na sa ABS-CBN. Hindi ito yung istasyon. ABS-CBN, ito po yung alak, babae, sugal, cabaret, bar at nightclub. 
puro entertainment. O kaya lahat ng sine na panood, kada kambyo ng sine nandun. Too much TV, too much music, too much radio. Pagkatapos ng day by day, bakit patayin na ang radyo? Di po ba? At mag-concentrate sa inyong ginagawa. Sobrang mga bisyo kumisan. Kaya sabi nga sa Luke 12:19 to 20 and I'll say to my soul, Soul, take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool. Hindi yun ang ibig sabihin ng buhay. To eat, drink, and be merry. And so sometimes there's too much entertainment. Baka po sobrang entertainment sa buhay natin mga kapatid. Ganong karaming oras natin ang ginagamit sa pagsamba sa harap ng bagong templo at altar ngayon, which is the TV set. Yan daw po ang modern altar. Ganong karami ng mga tao, mga pamilya ang may family altar, nakakapag-pray together, magkakasama, pero ikinumpaya niyo ang oras magkakasama sa pananood ng TV. That is where the people of this generation worship in front of the TV set. Naaagawan ng Diyos, tapos galit na galit tayo sa mga idol, idol din ang TV. Anything that stands between us and God is an idol. Baka naman sibakin nyo na ang mga TV. Hindi masama, pero kung dapat ilalagay natin sa tamang proportion, baka mas marami pa ang oras ng TV kasi sa pagbabasa ng Bible, honestly, sino ang makakapagsabi, pero don't show your hand, let the Lord see. Sino ang makakapagsabing, mas marami akong oras ginugugol magbasa ng Bible kasi sa manood ng TV. Meron kaya? Kung meron, inyo na ang air ko na ito, iyuwi nyo na. Huwag nyo lang ipakita sa guard. So, meron kayang ganun? Ganun karaming ako pumunta sa TV. Too much entertainment. Too much comics. Too much magazine. That's very little of the right things. What are the other biblical references to idleness? Alam nyo ang Bible tag-tag ng mga verses about idleness? Hebrews 6.22 ang sabi, We do not want you to become lazy. And then Proverbs 31.27, na describe po ang isang ulirang babae, An ideal woman, sabi, she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Anong resulta? Verse 28, Proverbs 31, Her children rise and call her blessed. And her husband also, he praises her. Mga kababaihan, ang inyong po bang anak ay talagang sasabing, wow, okay talagang mami namin. Naunang gumising at inihahanda ang aming breakfast. O baka naman ang mga bata ay nakaalis at nakabalik na ay tulog pa si mami. Sabi daw ang isang ideal mami, sabi sa Proverbs 31, pinakamaaga siyang gumigising, nauuna pa siya kaysa sa katulong. At pagising ng mga katulong, binibigyan niya ng mga assignment. At ino-oversee niya kung nangyayari nga. Hindi puro katulong na lang ang nagdedesisyon. Siya ang lady of the house. Siya ang nagbibigyan ng instruction. Kaya ang resulta, Her children arise and call her blessed. And her husband praises her. Kayo po ba'y napupuri ng inyong husband sa inyong kasipagan sa bahay? O pag hinawakan ng inyong husband ng mga basoy, nahuhulog sa dula. Nagmamantika. At pag may nangalong baba sa mesa, ibiglang nadadapa. Sa dulas ng mga mesa, hindi malang masabon. Anong klaseng pamamahay mayroon ang ating mga kapatiran? God is a God of order. Hindi maaari ang bahay ng isang kristyano ay marumi o makalat. Kumisan, papasok kayo sa isang bahay. O nyo ba? Lalo mga bachelor's pad. Ang linis naman dito, parang babae ang nakatira. At bakit po ang kristyanong lalaki ba dapat marumi? No. If the Lord Jesus Christ lived in a pad, a bachelor's pad, ano kaya ang itsura? Nagsabit kaya siya ng mga gamit, naghampas siya ang mga pantalon niya at nagkalat kung saan-saan? Or will it be orderly? Sometimes even the men of today have a very, very distorted concept of what a man is. Children of God have to be orderly. At hindi ka pwede maging orderly kung ikay tamad. Kailangan maayos, malinis. We do not eat the bread of idleness. In Proverbs 20 verse 4, A slaw guard does not sow in season. And so at harvest time, he looks but finds nothing. Eh, wala naman daw itinanim. Siyempre, wala naman tayong aanihin. And then, Ecclesiastes 10 verse 18 says, If a man is lazy, the rafters sag. If his hands are idle, the house leaks. 
Napakarami pong tao masyadong disareglado. Kaya laging huli, ang mga bata kung kailan nandiyan na yung school bus, saka pa gumagawa ng mga sandwich sa mga nanay, walang-walang organization. Alam niyo po kung tayo kumikilos on time, hindi tayo patamad-tamad, hindi tayo dapat laging nagkakandara pa. At tumisan may mga tao kung kailan lalabas ng bahay, saka doon palang pinaplansya yung isusuot. Pagkatuloy, brown out, nagpapanik. Hindi kasi handa. Mabuti pa daw yung langgam habang summer, ipon ang ipon. Pagtagulan na, kampante na siya. Maraming tao po, lagi na lang at the last minute ang lahat ng bagay. May mga ginang na kung kailan nagpiprito, ay wala palang mantika, doon patatakbo sa tindahan. Kaya kung tumatakanda ng gaso ang kuryente, nasayang dahil wala pang itiniprito. At ang taong laging nagmamadali, mainitin ang ulo. Kaya laging nakasigaw, laging nag-aaway-aaway. Walang organisasyon eh. Mga estudyante kung kailan i-submit na lang ang mga thesis, mga term paper, dalawang gabi talagang nangangalumata. Gawa ng gawa. Kaya tuloy, pangit. Hindi maganda. If a man is lazy, the rafter is sad. Whatever your rafters are in your life. Ngayon, iba naman pong klase kung talagang wala naman pambili ng mantika, eh wala tayong magagawa. Pero merong may pambili. Pero kung ba't at the last minute, doon na lamang, walang organisasyon, nasasayang ang oras. Pabalik-balik sa tindahan na pagtutubuan ng mga sari-sari store, and best, mamimili once a month para medyo marami-raming mabili, na pagtutubuan, walang planning. At marami po sa atin, if we'll be honest, marami tayong wasted time. Because wala tayong organization. If a man is lazy, the rafters sad. Why does idleness rob man of happiness? Bakit tayo nananakawan ng kaligayahan kung tayo ay tamad o idle? Well, idleness robs man of happiness because idleness robs man of the things that bring true happiness. And what are these things? Basic necessities. Pag ang tao tamad, di wala yung basic necessities. How can you be happy kung wala kang basic necessities? And of course, you need to be prosperous also to be happy. But a lazy man will not be prosperous. Ngayon, kung meron kayong asawa o kapatid o anak na masipag, kumikita, kayo'y tamad, sabihin niyo, uy, hindi totoo yan. Tamad ako pero prosperous. But it is an artificial prosperity. Subukan ninyo na biglang mawala yung nagahanap buhay. Mawala sa inyong buhay. Heto na ang poverty. Two weeks pa lang, ramdam na. Dapat meron tayong sariling, ano, sipag. Marami pong iba sa sabihin, ba't ako tamad, enjoy. Sapagkat siguro ay umaasa ka sa iba. Pag nawala yung inaasahan na yun, wala na yan. And so, idleness robs us of happiness because it robs us of basic necessities and prosperity which is necessary to happiness. Idleness robs us of material security. Idleness does not allow us to have our daily bread which are basic ingredients of happiness. And of course, idleness robs us of comfort. Nauna ang sarap, pero mamaya may dusa. Paano tayo sasaya kung hindi tayo komportable? Nilalangaw ka, nilalamok pag natutulog. Paano? Magkabit lang ng kulambo, tinamad. We cannot be comfortable really if we are idle. We can only be comfortable in a very artificial period of time, but we're going to fail. And of course, idleness robs us of happiness because it does not allow us to be independent. Pag ba kayo dependent, sasaya kayo? Kahit matuhin kayo ng kahit ano, nakangiti pa rin tayo doon sa nagbubigay sa atin. Eh kasi, dependent ba kayo eh? That's what's wrong. If you're dependent on anybody, they can throw anything at your face and you will have no option but to smile. You cannot be happy. Only independent people are happy. We don't mean yung mga wives na full-time sa kanilang pagkatrabaho because that's not dependence. Because you are also working. Hindi lang kita yung salary. But full-time mothers are also working. Hindi sila dependent. Hindi lang sila pinapasweldo ng asawa nila. Pero hindi sila dependent. Dahil lang katrabaho sila. They are also independent because they earn the food that they eat through the honest labor. Underpaid pa nga ang mga asawa. Sasabihin ng mga ibang lalaki, bakit? Akong bumili niyan. Sabihin naman ng babae, bakit? Mabibili mo yan kung hindi ako nagtatrabaho sa bahay. Alagaan mo nga ang mga anak mo. Tingnan ko kung makakapagtrabaho ka, makabili ka. You are able to put these things up because I enable you. Because I do what you should be doing. 
And so, ang sayo ay akin din. Mga wives, ano kakalimutan na inyong script? <laughs> Dapat, inyo talaga yan. Eh, bakit? Kung wala ba kayo sa bahay, may magbabantay ng bahay niya. Sasabihin niya, TV ko, abay, hindi niyo binantayan niya, matagal nang nanakaw ng iba. Di po ba? Kaya huwag kayo nasabi-sabi siya ang kumita, kanya yan. No! Dahil kung kayo man, tinapasweldo sa bahay mga misis, baka kulang pa. Kulang pa. Ang mga misis ay nurse, doktora, carpintera, plumber, kusinera, labandera, planchadora, kasiping pa ng asawa. Aba, sa totoo lang po, kung babayaran kayo ng asawa nyo, lady pa kayo. Kaya huwag kayong sasabing papayag na kanila yan. No! If you are not there, they would have not been able to do what they do. Puro free pa ang services. Diba? Huwag kayong papayag na ginaganong-ganong kayo. Because wives are workers. Unpaid lang nga. And so why does idleness rob a man of happiness? Because idleness robs a man of self-respect. Ang mga taong tamad, kahit namurahin mo, basta binigyan mo, okay lang. Diba? Kahit napagalitan mo, nasa, eh, tamad eh. Walang self-respect. Inside the heart, nakakagrid din yun. Kaya ang taong tamad, hindi tunay na masaya. And of course, dependence or idleness, hindi nakakaroon ang tao tuloy ng respect sa atin, hindi tayo napupuri, hindi tayo na-admire, and we need that also to be happy. Our hearts bloom in praise. Eh, hindi ka naman napupuri, hindi mo nararamdaman yung ligaya. And of course, an idle person does not experience fulfillment. Therefore, idleness is really a key that robs us of happiness. Masyado tayong na-under change, na so short change, if we are idle because we don't enjoy basic necessity, prosperity, material security, our daily bread, we don't experience comfort, we don't enjoy independence, prominence, and even the capacity to give, we don't have self-respect, and we don't enjoy the respect, praise, and admiration of others, and we don't feel fulfilled. Luging, luging, luging ang isang taong tamad. And there are many forms of idleness, as we have said. There's a person na talagang full-time na idle. Meron namang paminsan-minsan, merong part-time na idle. Pero, how idle are you, brother and sister? How idle are all of us? Sabi ng Psalms 90 verse 12, teach us to number our days. We must number our days. Kaya nga nilagyan ng 24 hours para manumber. Malaman natin kung anong percent ang napunta sa productive endeavor, anong percent ang napunta dito, anong percent ang nasayang. Teach us to number our days. If you're going to number your days, brothers and sisters, how will you account for your 24 hours? How much is spent in idleness? How will you account for your seven days a week? How will you account for your month? And how will you account for your years? The first judgment, pag namatay tayo, either you're in heaven or in hell. And so in the second judgment, Proverbs 24 verse 12, ang sabi, will he not repay each according to what he has done? Will he not repay each according to what he has done? And Matthew 10, 27, For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. Sabi ni ba, akala ko ba eh, works are not important. No, works are not important when it comes to salvation because we become saved by faith. But those that are saved by faith, pagkatapos ng salvation by faith, important na yung work. Works after salvation, not before. Lahat ng work before salvation, bahaliwala yan. But after we become saved, we are expected to do good works. That's why Matthew 6.33, seek for his kingdom, and after finding his kingdom, his righteousness. Salvation then works. Words are very important. It is just as well, fortune tells us, for God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. In 1 Corinthians 3.13, talks about our work in the Lord. His work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. 
It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. How much work are we doing? And how much work are we doing with eternal value? How much work are we doing in the name of the Lord and for the Lord's kingdom? But let's remember a few things. We cannot work for the Lord. The Lord does not need our work. But we can work because we obey the Lord and therefore we work for the Lord's kingdom. But we don't serve God. We serve our fellow men. Whatever we do in the church, we are serving our fellow men. The Lord said, whatever you do to the least of this, you do it to me. You cannot serve God because the Bible says, God does not need to be served by human hands. As though he needed anything, since he himself created heaven and earth and everything in it. And so when we are doing something good, when the Lord calls us to serve, we are not doing it for God, brothers and sisters. You do it for yourself. Because you gather up for yourself treasures in heaven. And we do it for other people as well because we love to do it. So let's correct our terminologies. God doesn't need us. God doesn't need us. He made heavens and the earth and everything in it before He made man. At kung papansin ninyo ang order of creation, sa huli-huli niyang ginawa ang tao. Nandiyan na yung mga ibo, nandiyan na yung mga butiki, yung mga palaka, yung mga paru-paru, yung mga tipaklong. Nandiyan na ang lahat bago niya nakinuit ang tao. Paano nga naman, baka unahin niya tao, makalimutan ng tao, kakala ng tao, ay katulong na rin siyang gumawa. Dahil napakahilig nating umagaw ng glory ng Diyos. Kaya kahuli-hulihan, para matang, hoy, ito ang huling ginawa, wala kang itinulong dito. Because God doesn't need us. But God uses us to bless us. Not because He needs us. That's why Christian work is privilege. Salamat Lord at ginagamit mo ako. Dahil alam ko rin naman ako nagbe-benefit. Kung ako, ang dami-dami mga pinapagawa sa akin si Lord, kasi ito, ganun, ganun, ganun. No, God doesn't need that. But God uses us to bless us. And it is a privilege to be used by the Lord. Are you idle? Sa mga pinag-usapan natin dito, brothers and sisters, kung ito yung mga batong itinupukol, sino kaya dito ang puro black eye na at bukol? Mayroon kaya? Sige sa atin natin ating sarili. In closing, I just would like to encourage everyone to be alone with God. Let's be alone with God and be private with God for some time. And think where we are idle. Tuhingin natin ang tawad sa Diyos ng idleness natin. And then let's ask for God in filling so that we can be the person that He wants us to be. Amen.